Boy, I love the lake. It's so clear. I wonder where all the water comes from. Me too. We can find out. All right. Let's take a look around. So, did you find anything? No. Did you find anything? I didn't find the spring, but uh, I did find Dr. Mayo. Oh, hey, Dr. Mayo, how are you? Hey, guys. What you looking for? Well, we're looking around for the springs, but... Well, you know, so are we. We've got a class out here, and uh, here's the, the secret. We've got boats. We're gonna find it. Sweet. So if you wanna tag along with us, Is we'll... Is that all right? Uh, yeah, sure, we'll take you for a ride, and we'll go out and uh, try to find these springs. Great. Well, follow me. So while I went with Dr. Mayo to take some measurements in the boat, Eric, well, Eric did his thing. Actually, Eric walked all the way around the lake with some of the other students and measured the water flowing out of Clear Lake. Why are we measuring the flow of the stream? Um, the more that we understand where the water is coming from, we can know more about the recharge area where, where more water is, is replenishing the stream so we can better preserve this waterfowl area. Okay, so now we take the flow meter and we just go every few inches, every about half a foot every time. Okay. Um, so this is the actual flow meter. So we want it facing the direction of the flow. So it'll be in this way. Okay. And then these tick marks show us, how, oh, sick. So this goes down. Oh, okay. So this number one needs to be here at 60%. So we're about 60% underwater Okay. from the depth. And we're just gonna measure the flow. Okay, so then, so the water flows over that little flow meter and uh -huh. goes through the wire. And how fast is it going? 0.78 feet per second. 0.78 feet per second. So then we just move it every... While I continued to learn how to take measurements with Laura, Jonathan went with Dr. Mayo and the other students to see if they could find the source of the lake. But in order to do that, they had to use some special tools that would help them find what they were looking for. So what do we have here? All right, so what this is is just a conductivity meter, which measures what conductivity is, is basically the amount of dissolved minerals that you find in the lake. And it also measures temperature. And so we'd expect that where the, f the more fresh water is coming in, that the conductivity reading would be a little bit lower. Right. And so we're using the conductivity to kind of judge where the spring might be. And the temperature can also give us a similar idea because this time of year, it's such a shallow lake. And so it's warming up quite a bit. And so you have maybe higher temperatures farther away from the springs because the springs are cooler. And so we're using this to just get a measurement and just an idea of where we are relative to where the springs might be. Well, that's pretty cool, is it right if I give it a shot? Yeah, sure, so just take the probe, toss it in the water. And then what you'll see here is just calculating for a second. And so we just gotta wait till it settles down? Or? Yeah, just wait till the numbers settle kind of around the same number. And that's the recording that you wanna write down, so. After a few hours of taking measurements on the lake and a stop to pick up some new passengers, we made an interesting discovery. It was 19 before. It was 19 out in the middle out there. Mm -hmm. So it's colder, but didn't... You see where it's... It's uh... colder and slightly lower conductivity, isn't it? There's bubbles right there. I saw bubbles. Slightly lower, yeah. Thanks to the geology department and their students, we had found the source of the lake. And it's a good thing, too. You see, when you know the source of a lake, you can better protect it and its ecosystem. Jonathan and I would never have found the springs in Clear Lake on our own, but the geology department had it down to a science, literally. Thanks to the hands-on training these students receive from professors like Dr. Mayo, they're ready to go out into the world and make an impact. Some students go on to help protect the environment with organizations like the U.S. Forest Service. Others jump into the oil industry with companies like Chevron or Shell, and others end up doing something else entirely, like surveying. The great thing is, whatever you end up doing, when you're a geologist, the earth is your workplace. And that's a cool office no matter who you work for.
Hands-On is a production of the College of Physical and Mathematical Sciences. If you would like to learn more about any of the majors in CPMS, visit www.science.byu.edu.